Hello everyone, my name is Ala Shabana. Today I'm going to be talking about incentivizing intelligence via the BitTensor protocol. Now, machine intelligence today is plagued by two problems. First, any intelligence produced by models is always lost. So machine learning research compounds every year with new and innovative ways to incrementally build on the older ones. So um, every single year we're publishing new papers, we're publishing new works by building incrementally on previous works that we've already done. However, the models trained in these works are actually typically discarded and the new ones are developed every iteration. So this means that to beat the current state of the art, we often have to train from scratch and we can't really directly take advantage of what a previously trained model has already learned to train our new one. So what we're really doing is we are just retraining over and over and over into new models to actually um, beat the previous state of the art. Second, model evaluation is always subject to bias. So this is a pretty well-known issue within AI circles. It's notoriously difficult to replicate results. And the peer review process itself is suffering from a lot of setbacks, including human bias. A better system instead should allow models to evaluate other models. So intelligence evaluating intelligence. In this way, we remove human bias. At the same time, we make it so that only if your model is a well-performing model truly to the collective as a whole, then you'll be rewarded accordingly. Um, and this way becomes a lot more fair and it removes the um, preconceived notions we have about uh, a lot of the publications that we already do. Now let's talk about BitTensor. BitTensor is a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer machine learning protocol that allows models to exchange knowledge with each other. So models are ranked by their peers for the informational significance of their contributions to the network as a whole. The entire system can actually be divided into two layers, the AI layer and the blockchain layer. Now let's talk about the AI layer. We refer to each node on the BitTensor network as a neuron. And now these neurons aren't to be confused with the traditional neurons in traditional neural networks. Instead, each neuron on the BitTensor network is actually a full computational node that contains a single neural network within it. Um, and this single neural network is being trained on the BitTensor protocol uh, to solve some specific problem that it's working on. Neurons uh, use gRPC to query each other over the wire and use the responses coming back from the peers to train this neural network that they contain. Now let's see what this actually looks like. Say that we have a client. This is a client with a neural network within it that is a text-based neural network. So it could be working on something like GPT, a generative text model. And uh, the first thing this client's gonna do is it's going to speak to its uh, blockchain layer to identify a list of blockchain peers that it can speak to. These peers are typically high ranking peers because um, the higher rank, the more um, likely this neural network is gonna give you a higher quality of uh, logits back. Now, based on these peers' specialties, it's going to send inputs um, to them for evaluation. So um, the peer specialty here um, is actually the modality that they're training on. So for example, you may have peers that are working on images or peers that are working on audio. These wouldn't really be useful to our client who is working specifically on text data. So as a result, what this client's going to do is it's going to select some peers that are also working on text and it's going to send them a batch of, uh, of its own data sets um, to their neural networks. Now, what each peer is going to do <clears throat> is it's going to uh, run this batch through their own neural networks and send back the output. And uh, you may have peers that may not be responsive. As a result, we will not speak to them again in the next iteration. Now, what the peers are going to do is they're going to send back their responses to our client, and the client's going to join their responses uh, together and use them as input to its own neural network locally. And then after that, it's going to propagate the gradients backwards, training the network um, that it contains. Now, the next part is validation. So what prevents a neural network or a very clever um, agent from just deploying some spamming script to send garbage data out um, that emulates an output of a neural network to the rest of the peers? We need validation for this. And so validation in BitTensor ensures that servers are being honest and that they're running real machine learning models that are being useful. And the validators are the ones that are responsible for ranking these servers and making sure that um, their ranks are correct on the blockchain itself. These are not to be confused with validators on proof of stake systems. These are specifically machine learning based validators. Now, I assume that you have one validator. The first thing that it's going to do is it's going to obtain some data from the BitTensor data set. And what it's going to do is it's going to identify some servers and send a batch of this data to those servers and keep the ground truth data to itself for evaluation later. So what these servers are going to do is they're going to run this data through their machine learning models and send back their outputs. 
which basically, let's say, in the example of text-based um, text based data, it's going to be what the next piece of, what the next token can be, for example, next token prediction. Now, if a server responds with spam or the prediction is nonsensical, the validator will not, hang them, will not rank them highly and they will, as a result, receive less reward. Now, on the other hand, the blockchain layer is responsible for incentivizing these network peers, um, as well as calculating the peer ranks and enforcing the consensus mechanism. So before we begin, we can define peers that have reached consensus with each other as peers with positive weight settings for more than 50% of stake in the network. And that means that um, there are peers that have been weighed by their peers um, by actually more than 50% of their peers as having a positive weight. So when more than 50% of the incentive, and it's basically the reward, is going to consensus peers, then the chain can be considered as having reached consensus. Now, the consensus mechanism itself is designed to solve for the problem of collusion as well. The problem of collusion is this. What if a bad actor decided to deploy some number of neurons that did not contribute anything to the network meaningfully, but instead they're just ranking each other highly? So um, basically it becomes what is called a cabal. It's a small group of uh, computes that compute nodes that are really just um, colluding together to get as much incentive as possible, to get as much um, of the reward as possible. Now, in this case, the mechanism takes into account the stake of the honest peers, which are the peers that are actually doing the work, and weighs it against the stake of the dishonest peers. And only the peers that have reached consensus within the honest subgroup of peers are going to receive the majority of the incentive from the chain as a result. So unless a node is in consensus with its peers, then it won't really receive much incentive. And its ratio of stake will decrease over time until it becomes really just um, ineffective to even deploy its sort of cabal. Now, the current state of the BitTensor, BitTensor network today, um, we have launched back in November 2021. Um, we have capped the amount of participating peers at 4,096. Now, this cap is not static. It is a dynamic cap. And what that means is that if somebody joins the network and they have some high-performing model they want to kind of, um, they want to contribute to the network with, then the lowest performing peer is automatically kicked out and they get to replace them. Um, each of these peers is typically running a generative language model. Um, it's all plugged into the Hugging Face API. Um, the conservative estimate is there's a total sum of about 500 billion parameters um, decentralized and growing. And uh, each node is queryable, um, it's inferable and trainable, and all of this information can be accessed on our website or on our GitHub, um, <clears throat> GitHub code page. Thank you so much. Um, you can install BitTensor Bit directly through PIP. Uh, feel free to scan the QRs to go to the website or to GitHub. And thank you.